Hello and good evening. Welcome to our program, Science Deal <clears throat> Delivered, Refreshing Letter Writing. Uh, I am one of your co-hosts uh, for this program, and I'm co-hosting with my lovely co-worker. Hi! <laughs> my, <laughs> my name is Bernadette, and I'm a positive parenting librarian with LA County Library. Sorry to wake you up. <laughs> yeah, you woke me up. <laughs> Cool. So um, we're here to tell you how amazing letter writing can be and um, offer you some tips and tricks uh, so you can go ahead and participate in this tr traditional method of communication. And uh, again, thank you for joining us tonight. I know it's a nice, rainy and cold day, which is perfect for letter writing. Uh, well, I think so. <laughs> OK, so today we're talking about the history and fun facts of letter writing, elements of a letter, addressing an envelope and the postage, postcards, um, getting creative and refashioning postcards and letters. And of course, we'll have a resource page uh, followed by a QA and a at the end. Okay, so. Um, so quite a few people are um, intimidated by letter writing, but uh, we'll, we'll slip, we'll uh, make sure that we'll guide you guys through this and it'll be easy peasy. Okay, so um, letter writing started as a way to communicate with people. And according to the ancient historian um, Hellenicus, I hope that's how you pronounce him, how's this his name? The first recorded handwritten letter was written by a Persian queen. Her name was Atosa around 500 BC. So letter writing has a long history. And uh, now we have uh, phone, we have text, we have email, and the ever popular video conference or video calls and FaceTime. And some people might think that uh, there's no longer letter writing, but um, there are still people writing. And um, before we delve into that, a little teaser, we're going to ask you a little trivia. Um, Adriana is going to pull up a poll. So you can go ahead and answer how many of you know how much the postage is for the forever stamp. And Bernadette, can you explain to our audience what a uh, forever stamp is? Forever stamp. So um, until they came out with the forever stamp, which is a brilliant idea, you would have to buy like one cent stamps to um, add to your postage because you would buy the stamp the current amount stamp, let's say it was 35 cents. And then, it, you know, next year it goes up to 37 cents. You'd have to buy those two cent stamps. Well, they came up with the idea of the forever stamp. So that way you can just buy it and you never have to worry about adding extra postage. So it lasts forever. <laughs> and we like to think it as a discount where like, okay, well, you know, it's going to go up, but I still paid an X amount. Oh, almost. Gave it to you guys an X amount. Um, so a nice little discount in the future, right? Okay, so while we're waiting for the poll, um, I know a lot of people are intimidated uh, with letter writing, partly because they feel like they don't have time or they don't have um, the right paper or they just don't have, uh, maybe they have messy penmanship. So I'm here to help you guys and Bernadette's here to help you guys to relieve those fears. Uh, one, letter writing is not common. So the fact that you are, you know, getting a pen and, and sending out a letter to your friend or your loved one um, is impressive enough. Uh, two, you can write a letter maybe five minutes, even less, just depending on, on how you feel. Maybe you want to put one sentence on in your letter and send it off. And... It's just, I don't know, fun, I, I think. Uh, it's it's fine. You can um, choose any type of paper you want. Um, you'll still, again, impress your friends. So um, oh, for those of you who like to keep track, um, I know there's a lot of people who like to write email, uh, emails and save a copy for themselves. You can do that too with letters. You can photocopy it. You can take a picture. Or what I like to do is I like to write my important letters on um, some type of like, word or google docs and do a spell check and a grammar check so um, if you're if you're worried about grammar don't worry those apps have your back right bernadette right they do <laughs> all right so um let's see what our poll how many people answered let's see okay so we're gonna pull that up hopefully you guys 
have the correct one, but if it's not correct, it's fine. We're gonna share it with you. Um, let's see. So Adriana is gonna help us. <laughs> but oh my goodness, it's so cold, right, guys? My hands are cold, and like my nose is cold. Again, perfect, perfect weather for letter writing. Glad for the um, rain. I'm so glad for the rain. Yes. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna wait on that. Um, and I guess we can go ahead and get started uh, with the when to write and why. And we'll come back to the the um, forever. Oh, I guess I, Adriana is telling me that I should see the post, but um, let's go. Hmm, I don't know. I'll leave it to Bernadette while I continue on this presentation. Go for it. <laughs> okay, so there's this book. Um, I really enjoyed the book. It's called The Art of the Handwritten Note, A Guide to Reclaiming Civilized Communication. And how amazing is that title? Um, I think it's amazing. I, I thought it was really cool. Um, it's worth to pick up the book. Um, it's written by Margaret Shepard. If you're interested in this book, uh, we do have this on Overdrive or one of our digital copies. Um, one of the moderators is going to share that link with you. So if you want to put this on hold, you can. But uh, Ms. Shepard uh, gave us three reasons or three uh, situations of when we can write a letter. Uh, first is obligations. Those are notes that you owe. Uh, for instance, it's going to be um, condolences, um, apologies, gratitude, thank yous. Those are um, obligations that you can write your letter or a card to. For occasions, um, they're for notes that keep your relationship on track. So those are like birthdays, uh, special events, um, anniversaries, uh, achievements like graduations, and then opportunities are notes that you write to connect with people um, that you normally wouldn't um, connect with people in a way that you normally wouldn't. For instance, um, I just moved to a new neighborhood and um, my husband and I, we decided to um, get a, a sorted box of uh, chocolates and we wrote a thank you card and we sent it to or we hand delivered it to our neighbor just as a thank you for welcoming us into the neighborhood. So that's one way, uh, one opportunity that you can use to to write a, um, a thank you card. And um, we didn't see the results, but we don't want to leave you hanging. Um, Bernadette, would you like to share what the forever postage is? Dun, 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 55 cents i know and if you guys are really listening you probably almost caught me telling you the answer so i'm glad i i didn't give you the answer <laughs> <laughs> but yes 55 cents is the postage for your regular um letter mm -hmm. and um reasons why you would want to write hand write instead of you know the other forms of uh, communication is that it allows you to think about your phrasing. For me, I'm a big user of those filler words. Uh, mm, er, and my big one, my friends know this, is like. I don't know if it's because I grew up in SoCal or not, but like is my big, uh, big one. Um, also, uh, when writing handwritten notes, it um, let's you, you know, delete that, all those little words. It makes it a little more polished. Um, and just, I think, you know, the message is a little more clear. So that's one perk of, of handwriting uh, a letter. But it shows your personality through many ways. You can choose your paper. I'm obsessed with textures. So when I see the lines and the press flowers or the fibers, I get like really happy. I don't know if anyone else uh, in this program or in the audience gets happy just looking at the paper. Yes, that like, that's like my heaven. Um, you And also you, your handwriting or your penmanship shows your personality, whether you choose to write in all caps. I have a friend who does that. Uh, I'm not sure why, but she does. Uh, you, whether you choose to write cursive or use calligraphy, uh, what pens you use, uh, if you choose to draw. So all that helps to sort of, you know, show your personality in, in letter writing that maybe an email or a text wouldn't. Um, what's also nice is that a letter, letter writing and receiving a note through the mail or hand delivery, it takes the pressure off the person who receives it. It's a gift of your attention to your receiver. And just like, hey, you know, I was just thinking about you. Um, if you want to 
respond. That's okay. If you don't, you know, it's, it's fine. So it's, it's nice uh, for that, I guess now, because we're so used to like a go, go, go. And um, I'm guilty of it. When I send a, a text or an email, like, oh, she didn't reply, but a letter is, is totally different. You know, it's, it's definitely slower, a slower pace. And it's just, like I said, it's just, I feel like unattached, no strings, like, hey, I was thinking about you. And that's, that's what's really lovely about a letter. Um, also, what's great is that, um, like I mentioned, I'm like an instant reply person. And sometimes when I'm drafting an email, I accidentally send send without finishing it. So the, you won't have that with a letter, whatever you want to write, it can go through. Um, you know, you pick and choose. Um, sometimes you can toss out that letter and rewrite it. No problem. You know, like ultimately you putting the postage and sending off is what um, gets the, the final letter. Right. So that's what nice. That's what's nice about it. And um, what's cool, too, and Brennan's going to share more about it, is that um, it connects past generations to the future. And Bernadette has a really cool story that she's going to share with us. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, my dad worked uh, on assembling his family history, military history, and an uncle of his was a POW in World War II. He lost his life as a prisoner of war, but my dad was able to write a short story about his uncle through family anecdotes and handwritten letters that his uncle had wrote his family. So he wrote it, you know, as soon as he took off on his journey prior to the military, he was writing letters home. So it was really cool to read those letters and have, you know, fill in the blanks with all the other things. But if it wasn't for the letters, it would have been harder to write, read, write the story. So also, we're going to have some fun facts. Um, oh, yeah. Kasha and I decided to send letters to each other <laughs> during the planning of this program. Yeah. And it was so much fun to create the letters. Yeah, and no, the stationery. Right. And then way cool to like, oh, my gosh, look, look, I got something in the mail, or, you know. So um, it was fun. It was a lot of it fun. Was definitely a special project in my heart. Yeah. 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 It's it, it just generated a lot of creativity. And, you know, we're co-workers, but now we can really say we're friends because. Yeah, it's like you know. warm fuzzies. Um, that's what <laughs> Yeah. We we discovered the things in common that we had. So yeah. that's cool. every time I talk about this that I'm telling people, I'm always like, oh, you know, you know the <laughs> so hopefully we can share that with you guys. Oh yeah. Hopefully you'll you'll feel it. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. So um before we get started on the fun facts, uh, how many songs do you know that refer to letter writing in them? Mm -hmm. So go ahead, you can type those in the chat. Um how many, how, what songs, name the songs, I should say. Don't tell me, to name the songs. What, what songs do you know that refer to letter writing? Yes. All right, here we go. Fun facts. So a survey conducted in the U.S. reported 62% of females who responded say the most cherished gift on Valentine's Day would be a handwritten letter from their beloved in 1952. A lady in Brooklyn, New York, wrote to her boyfriend in the U.S. Army serving in Korea. She wrote a letter using a roll of adding machine paper, 3,200 feet, and it took her one month to write it. That's romantic. <laughs> it is, but that's insane. Look how small that is. I know, a little adding machine. <laughs> Clever, though. <laughs> Creative. Yeah, it's cool. In 1840, uh, the first postage stamp was produced and postal service was established by the British. In 1842, the U.S. formed a limited postal ser service, a uniform five cent charge for sending letters. In 1845, a standard uh, that was in 1845, standardized stamps in 1847. In 1860, the postal service was invented. And a little more history for some history lovers from Kasha. Yes. And um, if we can fast forward our PowerPoint for a little bit, but um, so for you California history lovers, um, the American Indian Resource Center has a collection called the Letters of the Office of Indian Affairs, 1849 to 1880, California Superintendency. It's a long name, but it's well worth it. 
And um, there are 5,520 letters in this collection. There are letters that were written by U.S. government officials and civilian settlers uh, that show interactions with the um, colonial government, with California Indians, pre-statehood, and after. So this is actually a collection that um, LA County Library is like the first to digitize. And we're inviting the public to help transcribe them, which means that we're asking you to, or those who are interested, read the letters and type it out so that way they can become searchable. If this is a project that you're interested in, I highly recommend uh, watching the video that I made with another librarian, Amber, and it'll talk more about the content uh, and it'll, it'll help you decide whether the content is something that you wanna handle uh, since it's a serious uh, set of collections. But yes, we're, uh, we're, we're welcoming you to just join us. And I think we have about to this, um, since today we have, uh, Amber is gonna, she gave me the, the number too. I'm so sorry, guys. But to this day, I believe we have 921 letters transcribed. So that's 17% of the collection done. Um, if you're interested, uh, there's going to be a link, I believe, that the moderator is going to share. You can read the transcribed letters. Um, so if you can't read handwriting, that's fine. You can go to the transcribed letter and read the, the whole text. And if you like to do archival stuff, um, I highly recommend joining us for the uh, with this program. But yes, thank you. Yay. Yay. I know I'd like to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so a handwritten note from a sitting president is worth at least seven thousand dollars. <laughs> That's crazy, isn't it? That's a chunk of change. It's a chunk of change. Uh, I'll go ahead and tell you uh, this book here. The Mr. Lincoln's Whiskers by Karen B. Winnick tells a story about a letter written by a little girl named Grace Fidel, who suggested to Abraham Lincoln in a letter, uh, growing a beard would help him get elected president. And it is said a month after receiving the letter, he did have a beard and he got elected. <laughs> All because of the letter. <laughs> Um, some more fun, fun, funny stuff. During the Civil War, Americans relied on letter writing to keep in touch with their loved ones. One of the ways uh, in which people reported their health was writing about their weight. It was a wonderful thing for a soldier to hear that their loved one was as fat as a pig. It was a way to know your loved one wasn't sick or malnourished. Soldiers um, had access to scales during well checks and would report their weight in their letters as well. If soldiers or loved ones had funds, they would take portraits to send in the mail. Portraits are a snapshot of the past, but letters are a way to communicate and document changes. I think it's funny because uh, we know we're not gonna share our weight anymore. We don't even wanna share with our doctors, right? So this is just crazy that <laughs> we used to tell willingly their, their weight. Hmm. Well, that was a way to know, yeah, that they were healthy, healthy and eating, right? By the mid 20th century, letter writing was so prominent that it was a feature in pop songs. So let's see, what did our participants offer in the chat as far as our uh, songs that mentioned? They had some great ones. Uh, of course, our title for the program is a song, Sign Sealed Delivered by Stevie Wonder. So some of them put that. Mr. Postman is probably one of my favorites. Yes. Return to Sender. Yes. We have some Elvis in here. Elvis lovers. What else do we have? It's Mr. Postman. Uh, uh, Strawberry Letter 22. I don't know that one. I'll have I to look either. it up. Dear John, sealed with a kiss. Mm -hmm. I probably know if we hear it. Off, you know? I'm going to sit right down and write myself a letter. It sounds familiar. Someone put a four page letter. Yes, I'm a Aaliyah fan. So thank you for putting that. Um, and then for those of you who don't know some of these songs, uh, we, we do have a uh, music subscription that the library has. If you have a handy dandy library card, um, free goals. So you can uh, search these songs to listen to. But what other songs do we have? Um, well, send a letter to Michael, send a letter to Maria. Oh, I wonder that, that, yeah. Okay. A letter to Michael. I think that's what, oh, Dion Warwick, I think. 
No? <laughs> Thank you. Yay! Yay! For, uh, submitting these songs. Uh, we're going to add that to our free list of songs to listen to. <laughs> Yeah. the brothers johnson record 1977 i'll probably know it if i hear that song i love music from the 70s <laughs> all I right love it too. okay some a letter all right now that we've had some fun songs that we've shared with each other we're gonna delve into elements of a letter and um with a letter you're gonna want to add um a date but we're gonna we do have a, a diagram if we can yes thank you <laughs> okay so elements of a letter we would uh, suggest we suggest that you put a date that way um it frames your letter and gives the reader context whether uh, maybe you wrote it on new year's day and that would explain why you have all these new year's resolution and goals or maybe there was a historical event that happened and it will explain to the reader, maybe years later, why your tone of letter is either happy or sad. Uh, followed by the date, we have the salutations or greetings. You can put words like dear, um, hello, hola, um, and then maybe the name and a comma. For business letters, you don't want to use a comma. They recommend that you use a colon. And then after the salutations, it follows a body or message that you want to convey in the letter. And um, sometimes it depends if you want to, uh, you know, have it flush to the left or have it indented for the paragraph, it's up to you. Um, the closing, you want to give a closing statement so they know that your letter is closing. Um, sincerely is one, yours truly, love. Um, what's been really popular is warm regards, our best regards. And I've been seeing a lot more in my emails is uh, be well, be healthy. Um, so afterwards, after the closing statement, you'll want to include your signature. Um, if it's formal, you want to include like first and last name. If it's informal, you can just sign your first name. So it really depends on you. And I know some of you guys may already be doing this or have seen it in the letter uh, PS, which stands for a postscript, which um, was taken from the Latin word postscriptum, which means written after. So if you're like me, or I get like, I'm writing and I'm frazzled, I'm like, oh yeah, I wanted to include some information. Um, and, but you've already signed it. That's when you put the PS, so postscript, like, you know, maybe, um, you know, thank you for, you know, the gift. Or uh, if you want to add more to that, let's say you wrote that PS and you're like, oh, I have another, something else to include. You can do post postscript. And then if you want to add more to that, it'll be post, 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 postscript. So it goes on and on. Um, <laughs> but it's really your style of writing if you want to include that or not. But yes, now we're going on to addressing an envelope, which is really important. Really important. Ooh. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. Because otherwise the post office won't deliver your mail. So when addressing an envelope, please write neatly. Use the complete address of the recipient and include your complete return address. The U.S. Postal Service recommends using all capital letters. If you are typing or printing addresses, use 10, 12, or 14 point fonts for best readability. The return address is in the upper left-hand corner. The recipient address goes just right of center. Always use applicable directional in the address. For example, La Puente return address has an E for East. I should say the La Puente libra Library, E for East. <laughs> Always use applicable abbreviated locators in the address. For example, APT for apartment, ST for street, AVE for avenue, RM for room, FL for floor, STE for suite on the same line and after the street address or on the line above the street address. Use two letter state abbreviations and always use a zip code. If you know the zip plus four, use it. Use it. Your postage stamp is placed on the upper right corner. Write the city, state, and zip code information on the same line. Check to make sure you are always using the zip correct zip code numbers. If you are mailing a package, uh, insider tip: put the addresses inside the box because sometimes things bust open and the post office doesn't know where to send it. So if they find the address inside your package, you'll more likely to get it get to get it back or get it to the recipient oh yeah Brenda, did you share why it's an insider tip because my dad 
was up worked for the post office. He started out as that. a mail carrier and he worked in the bulk mail center where they process the packages. So yes, you better tape that up, put the address in there. <laughs> I mean, tape it up. <laughs> Not that it just cause, you know. Um yeah. things bust up. <laughs> care of. Care of in is used c slash o care of is used if you're sending someone mail where they don't normally receive mail you may not know their mailing address but you know where they are they might work or visit so in that instance you can use care of so mm -hmm. time for a poll how many of you know your zip plus four this is a hard question i know um, my mailing address one now it's three zero four five I won't say what zip code it's for. <laughs> I, I still don't know, but that's fine. <laughs> um, so I, I, I was like sort of smiling because as Bernadette was talking about her part, I saw someone who said that they've been very healthy uh, during this time and they're, they're fat as a pig. I would say I'm very healthy too. So um, thank you for sharing that comment. <laughs> okay, so... I have a story to tell regarding um, the address, the return and recipient address. So when I was in college, it was my freshman year. Uh, I'm from a big family. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go a little further. So I'm hundreds of miles away from home. And of course I got homesick and I decided to write to my cousin, um, Tina. Hi, Tina, if you're watching. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to write her a letter, you know, wrote a heartfelt letter to her. And like, I was super happy. I go down and um, send it off. And then maybe a day or two later, I, I opened my little mailbox with my key at the dorms. And uh, I see that letter that I wrote. And I'm just like, what happened? You know? And then I realized that what I did was I switched the recipient and return address and um, it's a little embarrassing. So even to this day, I always double check whether it's a business letter or a personal letter that I'm writing out that I make sure that I have the correct addresses in the, in the right places. So hopefully you guys didn't experience that, experience that before or won't uh, in the future. But yeah, I was just like, oh, it's not a letter, you know, it's not so, a letter that someone wrote to me. It's my own letter that I wrote to myself, apparently. But yeah, th that's my story. And I'm going to share with you other reasons why your letter may not uh, be delivered. And if we could go back to the PowerPoint, uh, one is that you may not have any postage on it. And um, whether you put it on or maybe it like came off, because I know sometimes it just rubs off, maybe. Um, that can be a reason. Um, another reason could be that you do not have the right address or it's incomplete. Um, another one is that maybe they've moved um, or they're no longer there. Uh, the mail uh, becomes unclaimed. And sadly, <laughs> people can refuse the mail too. So that could be a reason why it didn't successfully uh, get delivered. Maybe the criteria was not met. So perhaps you sent out a um, package size envelope and you only put it as a regular, is it a regular mail? Bernadette? Say that again, I'm sorry. Is it legal, regular mail? Okay, well, I know there is class. class. Yes, first class. So maybe it's not the size. So maybe your size envelope, it's, it's becomes a package that are first class mail. Right, so yes. Have enough postage. So those are some of the reasons. Another is that the USPS address adjustments, perhaps uh, the house number has changed or the street address has changed. Sometimes the post office um, consolidates and maybe the route, the, the delivery route is, uh, has changed too. So those are uh, ways that, that uh, or reasons why you might not, uh, your letter might not go to your recipient. And if any of the letters that you write, um, you know, have any one of these situations um, and it's unable to be delivered, then that's why it's important to have a return uh, address. That way, once the USPS tried a few times, they're going to send it back to the address that ha that's from the return address. And that's why we include that. But you don't necessarily have to have it, but it's a, it's a good um, practice to put your return address. And let's see. 
hopefully, oh, you, we're gonna, we're gonna ask about the uh, zip plus form. Okay, so I don't know. Um, uh, and it looks like, let's see what other people wrote. Oh, some people do know. I, I'm yes. impressed. I'm really impressed. Yes. Let's see. Let me scroll up and see what other people wrote. I'm um, impressed too. I did see people yeah, that said they knew people. it. Yeah. So we must have avid writers right now or people who just like their full zip. Well, don't worry if you don't know your zip. There's a uh, website that we're going to share in our resources, um, but it's the USPS website. You can type in your address and it'll, it'll come up with your uh, zip plus four. So if you don't know, that's fine. I know someone had, had commented that uh, they only know when they're shopping. That's me too. <laughs> so yes, that's a good one. Yes, yes. Shopping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now that we've got the some of the logistics of writing ma uh, mail, mailing things in the mail, we are going to get to the creative fun part. Yes, the best so, part. Yes. So we, let's start with some envelopes. So you can make envelopes out of any kind of paper. Um, if you if the paper makes addresses hard to read, which is like the red polka dotted one there, I suggest using a label or gluing a white or light colored rectangle with the address clearly written onto the envelope. The dimensions of your envelope cannot be larger than 12 by 15 inches and no thicker than three quarters of an inch thick if you are sending it in the mail. Oh, and the minimum is three and a half by five inches. So. Um, <laughs> someone made it out of the book pages that's a great uh that's a great suggestion thank you i know you need their yeah book pages are great for lots of things um you can make your own envelope using origami and there are also tools you can use to make your own you can make your own envelope any way you want just stick to the specifications if you're going to be mailing them in the mail so here are some tools um i own the tool that's on the left the stencil and um you see the, the square that you can use that to slide it across and then or up and down to make your envelope bigger. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, and then um, Kasha's tools are on the right. Yeah, so I have the um, traditional ruler. Um, the other time I forgot what a ruler was called, but now I remember it as a ruler. Um, so you can use that just to trace out uh, the measurements. And I have a paper cutter for folks who can't cut straight. Um, I think you can always cut straight with a paper cutter. And I know someone told me that they couldn't. And I witnessed that. So it's, a pos it's possible that you can cut not straight with a paper cutter. But there's another tool that we'll talk about for that. And then um, I have uh, the punch board um, that's on the very... What is it? My right? Yes, my right. On your right, too. Uh, it makes special size envelopes, um, little boxes and bows. Um, that one, I think, is a little high tech. It took me a while to figure out. But if you're interested in, um, in that, you can. Um, and then you can use other tools to give your envelope a nice crease, too, um, whether it's with your thumb, coin, or a little, um, I don't know what else you would use to crease. But yeah, your nails works great. Good. All right. Yeah, you can probably find these at your local hobby shop, mm -hmm. craft store. That's what I, I would look there, definitely. All right. So we have a DIY origami envelope, and we'll go ahead and play that video for you. Um, you can use any kind of paper, any size paper that you want. You know, you'll need tape if you want to mail it in the mail. You got the ruler there to make sure it fits the specifications. Making it out of legal size paper or notebook paper, it's going to be a little small for the mail. Um, but like I said, you go, you can start with big, you can do it with the newspaper and, and measure it down. Um, and then... Uh, experiment with it um i'm showing you how to fold it one way but maybe you want to fold it a different way maybe you want that one of the flaps to flap on the inside or or maybe you want to pull the corners in and they don't touch and you just stick them down with stickers so you'll see different ways to experiment with it so you want to make a square so any kind of square as long as it's square any size square and then you'll just cut off the part that you don't need not every paper starts as a perfect square, but this is how you can make one. And then finding the center of your paper. 
just helps make just things helps. a little even. And then folding okay. down the one flap, you get your pocket on the inside. And then this part, you can size it any way you want. You can pull them out more to make the envelope longer, um, wider, or pull them in more to make it more narrow. Oh, it's froze. That's pretty much the gist of it. <laughs> And then um, for those of you who get a lot of paper cuts, what I've heard too um, is if you have your hands moisturized, you're less likely to get paper cuts, just as a random fun fact tip. Really? <laughs> I once, and I'm not kidding, got cut by a cereal box when I was trying to open it. So yeah, it, you can get paper cuts like in funny situations. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> but I didn't know that. Moisturize your hands. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. So, oh, you know, someone just asked, um, uh, what, wait, what was it? Why, why do we need to know about the four, the zip code plus four? It's just a, a extension of exact. zip code. Yeah. So it just makes it more exact. It kind of helps the post office sort the mail mm -hmm. a little more effectively, a little more precisely. Oh, someone put that they learned learned uh, um, the folding in grammar school. The, it's so much fun. Fold. It's so yeah. much fun to fold, fold paper and fold letters. I suggest you just spend a day Googling and folding paper. <laughs> it yeah. feels good. It's therapeutic. <laughs> <laughs> On to postcards. So most postcards are vertically divided. The left portion is the message area. The right portion is the destination address. The postage and any other United States Postal Service marking or endorsement will go on the upper right portion. The right portion must be at least two and one eighth inches wide, measured from the right edge of the card. The whole right side from the top and bottom portion is dedicated, I'm sorry, dedicated to the destination address and any postal service marking. So just put, you just write the address and put the stamp and then they, they'll take care of the rest of that side. And the left side is yours to write your message. Um, so you can make your own postcard. You do have to follow the guidelines, requirements for the postcards, a minimum of three and a half by five inches and like the uh, envelope. A maximum of four and a quarter inches by six. Any bigger, or if the cardstock is too heavy, it will cost more than the postcard stamp. So currently, postcard stamps are 35 cents. You can also purchase blank pre stamped postcards for 39 cents each. So on the next slide, you'll see a postcard that, um, which is this is the making and now that's the result of what Kasha yeah. made for her Galentine's postcard. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? But let me tell you guys, I don't have skills in drawing. And so this sort of shows it. It still looks nice, but um, I had leftover things over and I'm glad it looks nice. So um, we're going to see, we're going to see Bernadette. So which, which is, I think is pretty creative too. Um, oh, I to say, um, I use a stamp in here just as a, a divider, um, extra lace. Uh, hopefully you didn't hear the sneezes. Extra lace and a scrapbook paper and a, what is it called? Cardstock. Yes. Cardstock. Uh, yes. So someone shared a postcard story here. She says she doesn't keep a journal, but she's sending postcards to her best friend's daughter every place she visited since the day she was born. So she's 10 and she has over 200 postcards. That's so, so cute. Isn't that neat? So she says, I tell her to remind me of all the fun things I did when I'm old and start to forget. So and that that's wonderful that she has oh, 200 that's postcards that's to that's track that's this that's life that's adventure. That's How inspiring. And then she'll probably pay someone, forward. Yes. I know someone who says that whenever they go traveling, they send a postcard from um, wherever they visit to themselves too. So, um, but I do, I like that you, that you send it to your 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 friend's daughter that's so cute i want to start that i know right <laughs> but i'm not a traveler so but i'll still start it <laughs> from all the cities i visit <laughs> in mm -hmm. southern california all right yes. so another example uh, of a postcard is 
here. Um, so again, so this is just blank cardstock. If you were to buy the blank uh, postcard from the mail post office, you can decorate it however you want. Um, and then uh, because you don't use an envelope, you might want to keep away from things that will easily fall off of the machine sorter. So just make sure whatever you have is secured very right, well. And their <laughs> yes. personal information is enough. Oh my gosh. So I was clapping my hands because I like the recipe. Um, just in case you guys are wondering, I made the recipe and uh, my husband really liked it. So currently the postcard is in my little, little uh, recipe journal that uh, I save for our family favorites. So it has a special spot in my, in my collection. Yay. But yeah, look how she drew it and she used different colors. Um, it, when I received it, I was like, oh, okay, this is, this is a happy cherry card. Um, so I liked it a lot. Right. So if you're, yeah. I mean, if you're a marker person that likes pens and stuff and you know, that could be your decoration versus cutting and gluing. So it's just whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you're mm -hmm. comfortable with. And just like I said, if you don't have skills in drawing or handwriting, you should see what Kasha uh, did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I actually practice calligraphy. Uh, I think this is what they call, um, don't look too close at you guys, but um, I think this is what they call modern calligraphy. And I really wanted to write a nice, just, and it was just her name on the envelope. I really wanted just to write her name very, uh, you know, pretty like um, on the envelope. And I practiced a lot. Um, there are some calligraphy books and um, classes that you can take with LA County. And the link is going to be in our um, resources page that we'll send to you later on. But uh, I have the calligraphy book. Um, and then look at the cute little, what do you call them, origami things that Bernadette sent me. I like that she sent a card with a dog on it. And then she sent me a little finger puppet. Um, I'm, I'm already moving my, my finger. <laughs> <laughs> she sent me a cat finger puppet. So I thought it was really cute. So this is something that you can do with with um if you're sending it to your kids or grandkids or nieces and nephew i think it'll be great if you want to start like a little pen pal with your with someone who's young and you can send that little uh origami or someone who's older because i had fun with it oh, yeah, maybe, i was gonna say you wonder where, what do i do with all the origami i love to make stick it on a card <laughs> yeah i thought it was cool it's cute it's, it's super cute um and then on the left side i have some other tools that i use um, I have a stamp pad, um, some other station. Oh, um, you, see, you guys, you guys probably see my box of chocolate. I love chocolate. But anyways, outside of that, you can eat that while you're writing a letter. Just be careful that it doesn't stain your letters, uh, which has happened to me. Uh, but in my collection, um, in Bernadette, you can zoom out. I'm sorry, not Bernadette, Adriana. <laughs> Thank you, Adriana, in advance. So um, I actually got this from a historical society. Uh, I think it was the Long Beach Historical Society. They were selling uh, cigar boxes. And I like to keep my letters in here because um, it feels like more old timey and I don't know, it's cool. Uh, but I keep my important letters in here if I can open it. Uh, my stamps, um, I have like different types of stamps. Um, these are sticker ones, so that's nice. And then the stickers for the envelopes. This one's so cute, it's a snail mail. Yes, I'm all about that. And then um, what's really fun, and I think maybe some of you guys are already doing it, is I have a little wax, a sealed wax kit. Um, it comes with a uh, candle. I use like my can, my other candle, so that's why this is unopened. It comes with a little spoon that you put over the flame. And be careful when you're doing this because you can hurt yourself. So just just remember that it's really hot because it's a live flame. Um, you can cut a piece of your wax. And for some reason, I guess I like to use the red one. You can cut a piece or you can just hold it over the spoon and it'll melt. And then you pour it over your um, lap on your, your envelope. I'm, I'm impressed that I remember that's the lap. And then you put your seal. Mine's a K since so my, my name starts with the letter K. Um, but I've seen people do uh, dried flowers. Um, with their um, hot glue gun, they put like little. Yeah, that's um, really good. Oh yes. So there and then you have. put mini colors, like mini like little shavings, and then and I'll give it a little design. 
Looks and really pretty. You can see the, the stamp. But yeah, um, so you can do that. You can put a little sticker, um, uh, lots of things that you can do. But I get like so excited talking about stationary <laughs> stuff. And oh, someone says that they use washi tape. Yes, that's cute too. Washi um, tape, yes. And then if you yes. go back to the PowerPoint. Thank you, Adriana. Okay, Yay. so you can repurpose items that's laying around the house. And the left, yes, left, the left window has uh, my planner. I, I have like a pretty plant or a planner with pretty dividers. And so I wanted to reuse that and I cut it to size and I put a quote under, which I really like. If you guys can read it, it says, to write is human, to receive a letter divine, which I agree. And it's by Susan Lendrill. And then, of course, I sent a favorite recipe of mine. Um, it's for peanut butter cookies to, to Bernadette. Uh, hopefully, her family will like it, too. But you can do this with magazines, like what Bernadette did. Um, any, anything that, you know, you want to do, you want to repurpose. It's always nice wrapping paper, I like Bernadette, too. And then, uh, for those who sew or have any leftover materials, I made a card for Bernadette uh, with cardstock and uh, leftover scrap fabric and uh, felt. And so um, I'm not so great with hand sewing. Uh, that's a very low skill that I have, but I do have a sewing machine. And so I, I cut the materials and I sewed it. Um, if you're planning to hand sew or machine sew, um, please make sure that you separate out your needle just like scissors, you don't want to mix your paper scissors with your fabric scissors. So when when you use uh, when you sew on paper, it's gonna dull it really quick. So that's why you don't you want to make sure that you label it differently from your your fabric uh, needles or scissors. Um, or if you don't have any sewing materials, you can also hot glue. So yes. Um, oh, this is my lovely sewing machine. Um, but again, you, you're, you're uh, always able to use hand sewing or hot glue. And then for those who can't cut straight at all, or if you want really intricate things, um, there's uh, a lot of machines out there that can cut. Um, this pink one is my Cricut. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, it's back somewhere here. Um, and um, I use this to make different cards. Um, you can also make envelopes. Um, it can make banners. So it's it's great for letter writing. And if we can go to the next slide, I used a Cricut to make this card. Um, my uh, awesome friend got married and, um, oh, we can go back. Oh, never mind, never mind. I know I. So I, I made a card um, for her, her wedding and I, I wanted to make sure that, not make sure, I wanted something that was a little memento that she can keep on her bookcase or on her refrigerator. So something very easy. And uh, what I did was like, I snapped the picture of her and I put it into that card. And so it's like a frame, a card in a frame. And I had a lot of fun um, making that. Oh, sorry. Someone said that I had um, um, bad spelling. So I apologize for the words receive and divine. Um, obviously, I didn't write that on uh, Word or Google Docs, so, but yes, but thank you for letting me know. <laughs> but this is the card. Um, what I did was I had the machine cut out like the little intricate leaves. There's no way I can cut that. You can with a craft knife if your, like, your hands are stable. Um, so, and the marker part, I wish that was me that wrote it, but it's not. It was my Cricut machine. But you can do this by hand. You can just simply get, um, you know, a square or rectangle, fold it over and cut a little square for the image or for the uh, frame. And um, I, let's see, I, um, I cut out or the Cricut cut out the leaves. So I put a gold leaf and then the heart is actually cut out too. So there was a red uh, gold on it. And then to cover all that uh, that was glued, I put another gold backing and then a white uh, little square. I'm sorry, I'm pointing at it as if you guys are here looking at it with me, uh, but you are just not, just in a different perspective. But I put a white part in there so I can write. And if you can see, you zoom in, it's that textured paper that I love. Um, but remember, if you have textured paper, when you write, um, your writing is gonna be, you know, 
textured as well. So um, if you don't like that, then uh, that's something to, um, to think about. Um, okay, next. Uh, next page. Oh, and then if you're wondering, the, the lemon is just to give my niece some privacy, but um, <laughs> I consider her a lemon head too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I like this a lot. Um, Bernadette uh, sent this to me. Uh, my name is very unique. So anytime I receive any personalized items, um, I get super happy. Um, so when I received a bookmark, I was like, oh, how cool. You know, it has my it has my initials on it. And um, yeah, I was like geeking out over it. So thank you, Bernadette. <laughs> You're welcome. It was fun to make. <laughs> and then- Hard uh, stock hole punch. Yeah, and then the envelope, right? That's a DIY envelope too. It's paper bag. Yeah, that's- Paper that's bag for my stencil. Yep, exactly. As as the next slide will show, I made envelopes out of coupon paper. <laughs> I love I loved receiving this because I was like, wait a minute, what is this? And I was like, if I get hungry, I can use this coupon. Um, but uh, yeah, what she did was like she nest she is it nest nestled them nest nested it was like nested. one of those nesting dolls. So I had that uh, like you open the envelope. And then you had that pink card and then within the pink card was a blue envelope and then with a blue envelope was like a green heart. So I was like, oh, um, but yeah, I, I was happy to receive a Valentine uh, letter card from from Bernadette. But yeah, I thought I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> it's, you use anything you want, anything you have at home, make, you can make it into something, you know, that's just part of being creative. Um as the next slide will show, um, magazines. I use magazines to um, cut out these images and words to make my own stationery with paper I grabbed out of my printer. Um, so I have Fashion Beauty Magazine and the Library Magazine. So, you know, that's where my images lend to. It shows my, what I'm interested in, my personality. Um, if you have other magazines, it'll reflect your personality. Um, so that's, that's what I made. Um, to make my own stationery and those are all in Im magazine images and i love how the flowers look like 3d flowers it's like almost you know the, the lighting and stuff it's really pretty um and then there's a tip on the next slide if you do use the plain white paper paper and you're worried about writing crooked just um, paper clip a lined paper behind it to use it as a guide for your writing so speaking of lined paper you can go old school with notebook paper um, you know, like yeah. I showed you the envelope uh, origami video, um, decorate it with the margins with uh, drawings or stickers, you know, I mean, that's what I did when I was a kid. We were writing mm -hmm. letters to each other all the time, you know, in class or for homework the next day, we'd see each other and give each other letters. So go old school. I think it oh, looks yeah. cool now. <laughs> I do want to point out that, you know, you're not limited to sending out through the mail. Um, if you're in the neighborhood or if you know someone or if it's like a colleague, you can hand deliver it to um, or drop it off at their mailbox. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Most definitely. Um, and if you prefer creating art, um, you can send small art creations to the mail, collages, small watercolors, paintings, pencil drawings, anything that fits in your envelope. And our mm -hmm. website uh, has lots of inspiring ideas in our activities at homepage. Um, you can check out our YouTube channel for artistic ideas on various painting and drawing techniques. You can experiment and make your own art. Try some of the art techniques to decorate your paper and make your own stationery, such as that marble card uh, making video that one of our fabulous librarians made. Um, you can also include things like the bookmark or the friendship bracelets to, in the letters to your loved ones. You can find those activities again on the activities and homepage. Um, other ideas you can do is a tic-tac-toe game, you know, mail the paper back and forth until the game is over, create your own Mad Libs document or send interview questions. Um, you get a lot of these ideas again at, at our activities at homepage. Um, so, My favorite so far is the recipes. So thank you. <laughs> it's fun. Recipe exchange, anything that's inspiring. You know, if you're writing to somebody that 
you know, does love to cook, ask about the recipes. If you write into somebody that likes art, maybe you send them something you made, you know, or someone that loves to read, send them the bookmark. And it's just a nice little treat to receive. It really, it really is. <laughs> it really is. Um, I guess I have one more question to ask you before we close out um, and start with questions, but what do you send and receive in the mail? Do you send letters? Do you receive letters? What do you send and receive in the mail? So some of the benefits on handwriting letters are it can make you happier. Writing them can ease stress. It's a way to show you cherish a relationship um, it, by confirming its importance. Um, mm -hmm. It's a memorable way to touch people you love, and they're left with a priceless artifact. It's a wonderful surprise to know someone would take the time and send you something in the mail. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I had a lot of fun with it. I have like one of those instant photos. Um, it's not really a pol Polaroid, but I like sending those out recently, too, um, just sharing. Oh, yes, I did send that to you. <laughs> it did send to me. It's on my bulletin board right above my, right yes. above my computer. Can you guys guess who, who's there? It's a uh, baby Grogu and a, like a little bear. <laughs> I'm glad you still have him. I do. It's right. He's right here, right next to my son's school schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Under his picture. Yeah, so you can send a lot of things. Um, gift cards for birthdays if you guys want to or for holidays. Yeah. Um, I do want to share a quote. Hopefully we'll can time. Is that okay? For uh, that's cool. And then we can see what some people are yeah. sending. So yeah. um, this quote is by Lord Byron. Letter writing is the only device combining solitude with good company. So I'm so glad to have spent uh, my time with you guys uh, in good company. And uh, hopefully uh, you guys will also be already participating or will write letters, whether it's typed up on a computer and then sending it out or handwriting. And this is what I really want, guys, a typewriter. That'd be so cool to totally up your, your game, right? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, so I little... of things you can send it. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have to, I would have to type it out on the computer to make sure everything <laughs> and then type it on the typewriter. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah there are label makers but anyways we're digressing um if you guys have any questions um uh i know we're running a little short in time but we're willing to take some questions hopefully you guys had fun people sent some postcards and letters Ooh, mail art and postcards look at yes. that send uh letters to my out-of-state friends i send birthday just because cards yay what type of glue do you use to paste cutouts on the paper? I personally use uh, it's a it's a glue stick that's specifically for. Oh no no, there is craft glue that's specifically for paper. That's a, a liquidy glue, and then there's one that's like a super stick, super stick glue stick. Like it's not your normal glue stick. It's like super stick. It'll it'll say it. That's that's it right. I, it's Wait, what was the question? Stick. All I hear now is just stick. What type of glue do you use to paste cutouts on the paper? Oh. Yeah, I like yeah. using the glue stick because uh it's sometimes it's less lumpy. You know? Yeah. But then I sometimes I feel like it can later flake off. Sometimes I use uh rubber. That's why I use this I use the the super one like oh, okay. it's a super super stick one yeah it's like glue stronger than the normal okay, i would have to look that up i mean uh, uh, sometimes yeah. though it's a little bumpy is um hot glue gun but that's more like if it's uh different uh materials not yeah quite. it depends on the paper that yeah. you use if it's thinner you might want to go with something that you can spread easily oh that yes wrinkle someone asked for yeah. the chat so let me type that out um let's see card swaps good job ah let's see holiday cards that's great writing letters to family a thousand letters to voters that's a lot of writing it's mostly just an outdoor letter right on that's awesome oh yeah the tape glue roller things i call it the same thing just thingies um that yes 
oh, I'm sorry, this person put, there are tape glue roller things that scrapbookers use to glue down photos and other pieces of paper. Yeah, they actually have little um, little dots like that they can put for photos too. Dots, and, yeah, um, double-sided tape thing, yeah. Um, what is it? They have like little corners to hold the, the um, <gasps> what is it? Photos, yes. Yes, those are, um, yeah, those are cool to use too. Yeah, so these are all great ways to jazz up your your letter writing and refashioning them. So um, there's letter writing has been, I think, more popular now, especially during you know the pandemic. Um, it's just a nice way to reach out to your to your loved ones. Um, yes, photo corners. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Um, I don't know. I I have a thing where words just you know slip from my mind. But yes, they're photo corners. Thank you, Rita. Um, mountain oh they're also called mountain corners I like that I know yeah it's kind of it sounds it sounds artistic <laughs> um Aww. someone put thanks for these great creative tips to send heartfelt paper love and uh and our touch less times yes I and I think that's what it is is you know your attention and your love is being sent out um and yeah I I know when we were doing this program, you know, we were, we were colleagues, we've known each other, but ever since we started writing to each other, it's, our relationship has been on like a, I think it's, you know, like now I'm doing this to Bernadette, you know, that's, I wouldn't have done that earlier. So I think it made our relationship a lot, you know, deeper. And we found out things that we probably wouldn't have found out if we were just, you know, talking through work. So it's been an amazing experience for me to, to send out letters to Bernadette and to receive her letters. So I'm hoping that you guys will experience the same thing too. Um, oh, yes. Oh, someone put, thanks for letting me geek out. Yes, please. Like we are, we are loving that. <laughs> and gold letter writing. Yes. Um, someone wrote in high school, um, a letter exchange. Wait, no, I'm reading it wrong. Uh, I also write to my family from when I was high school, when I was a high school exchange student 22 years ago. Oh, no, now they write to their kids. How cute. And then, oh, the exchange program said that uh, they should write instead of call because um, they'll learn more independence. Yes, I agree. I totally agree. Thanks for sharing that comment. Um, Yes, let's let's get that snail mail going, guys. Yeah, it's like a it's like a hug when you can't. <laughs> mm. <laughs> really, really. Aw. Yay, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> it was fun to do this. What's, what's nice is that you don't have to have, you know, all these high tech stuff. I mean, I do because I like craft stuff, but you can go low tech and you just go paper and pen. And that's the beauty of letter writing. It's just your attention, the words that you choose, and um, just how you write it and then sending it off. So I like that a lot. And it's it's very heartfelt. And I love, I love the history behind it. And it's just different, you know. Uh, oh. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, we're so happy to share this with you guys. So thank you for attending our program. Thank you very much. Yay. Oh, oh, someone posted an article. Okay. Ah. I'll have to copy that. <laughs> Make sure we save this chat. <laughs> oh, you know, someone put X's and O's. And oh, yeah. um, you know, this this was brought up recently in, in one of my meetings, whether X's and O's, like which one was a hug, which one's a kiss. Um, but it says X is a hug and kiss is an O, right? I think so. Uh oh, in your map now. <laughs> Hug. I don't know. <laughs> I think so too, right? I mean, that's your that arm. Makes sense. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Aww. Yes, we'll keep writing. We'll keep writing. Um, uh, it, it's been fun. I've been sending off letters to my friends and just waiting. Like, I wonder if they've received it. Um, but yeah, that's the fun anticipation part is whether or not um uh, they tell you they received it or or whatever. <laughs> Someone said, consider yourself kiss CYK. Oh, oh. Her, uh, that's the first time I'm seeing it. I know SWAC sealed with yeah. a kiss. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Kid, I love touch. this. I'm learning stuff. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, you guys are all welcome. Thank okay. you for coming. Thank you for coming. Yeah. And uh, if we don't have any more questions, I think um, that's it, guys, right? Keep keep your pens, your pencils, your calligraphy pens, and any form of stuff. Maybe your typewriter or your computer um, warm and send out those cute little heartfelt letters to your, your loved ones. But thank you guys for joining us. Oh, good night. Stay safe. Well, right, as thank you. <laughs> thank you for joining us for our... Um, what is our program called? Sign still delivered. Delivered. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Have a nice night.